It is good to have you back. If you are just joining us, this is the Spire Crackers, and we are moving on to our next topic, which is the anticipation of the election petition tribunal judgment. Then this has to come to light because recently one of the news all over the internet was this billboard that was trying to poke at the judiciary. Although the views on that have been conflicted, some are for it, some are against it. So now I feel it's time to do the introduction of guests. Now joining us live from Lagos, we have Sam Erugo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, a legal practitioner. Many thanks for taking time to join us on the show at this time. Thank you, everybody. How are you? Thanks for having me here. Okay, all right. Let us start the discussion with this. Since that we know for especially for the presidential petition tribunal, we are expecting the judgment probably by the first ending of the first or second week of September. We are expecting the judgment. And then just recently we had the billboard that seems to be directed at the eyes are on the judiciary. A lot of people have been for or against that billboard. What are your thoughts on it? Well, um, as a senior member of the bar, um, my position is that most times the public do not understand the workings of the judiciary. So that you find out that there are always misconceptions about the judgments. The provisions of the law are very clear on some of these issues. So that if you look at uh, the provisions of the Constitution and the Electoral Act, on these electoral matters, of course, to a large extent, we can always predict what the judgment will look like at the end of the day. The reason for this is Nigerians are often fearful because they do not have much trust in the judiciary. Do you feel like the reason for this is because they fear inducement? Because some of these petition tribunal judges could be bribed and then that's why they are trying to let them know that their eyes are on them. So if they do anything erroneous, people might want to call them out for it. That, that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, most times, it has to do with the misconception, the wrong impression people already have about the judiciary. Mind you that we are looking at the election tribunals where you have the finest of judges working. The, the truth is that the work is not really easy. Uh, some of us participating in this uh, tribunal, you find out that the volume of work that they have to go through to come to decisions, they are not very uh, easy for the uninitiated. So sometimes, of course, they are human. When they err, everybody wants to know that they've erred. When they do the right thing, nobody will want to appreciate them for that. So the general impression comes from general misconception, misjudgment of the rules of law which they have to apply. Probably will come to the issues of uh, some of the judgments that are already out. People still don't understand. Sometimes it doesn't have to do with the popularity of the candidate, but what the rules, what the law, the electoral acts and the constitution have provided. And of course, the judges have to apply the law. So for some of us senior lawyers and so many lawyers who are knowledgeable in this area, we know when the decisions are right and when they are wrong. We always will know. But most of the public will not understand it that way. Okay, all right, now to, to Destiny, because just on Thursday, uh, House of Representative member lost this position. It was one representing the Ojo Federal Constituency in Lagos State, because they, apparently the tribunal found that it was not qualified to contest for that election, and because of that, that position went over to Lanry Ogunyemi, that is the candidate of the yes of APC. So now, for a situation like this, do you feel like INEC should have done a thorough job rather than wasting judicial time, so to speak, deliberating on this for a lot of months when other things with pressing matters could have taken up the forefront in, for cases like this in court? Um, as again, it's a peculiar. Uh, situation and uh, 
Nigeria gradually is slipping off that high standard expected of it as a nation. We used to be a pace setter and in those days when while we were aspiring to the bar, we had nations like Sierra Leone, Gambia, and I think by extension Liberia, getting some of our judges and justices to sit over their matters because we were not just giant of Africa by the mere expression, by art we were. How do we look at a scenario like this and would in all cases not blame INEC, if not for anything, but for wasting the resources allocated to it for the conduct of that election. And by wasting the federal government resources, which is a product of taxpayers' money, you have also wasted the resources of the respective parties. And in the long run, a party who already had joined the process now had to lose a candidate because the courts, in the course of assessing and evaluating evidence while the position was challenged, found otherwise. In any case, INEC was in a better position and better placed to have discovered what the court had to waste its time. Uh, but again, uh, we are Nigerians. We will always endure. And in a few days' time, we are going to forget you know, <laughs> what the cost of a process like this is to the post of the nation. So um, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, we will endure it and we will let it slide. But in concluding my thoughts, I, I think that more should be expected because East, West, North, and South, there are pockets of similar scenarios, similar situations. Uh, sadly, of importance is the Labour Party, uh, particularly with respect to the factionalization of the platform and uh, the restraining of uh, another of court, restraining Abure, and Abure still acting, which, you know, directly or indirectly played out in what the Court of Appeal in uh, Imo State. So it, it's, 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 it's all, for me, I think we should just leave our minds open. Like we would always say, it is what the court says that eventually would stand. Okay. Uh, maybe if you permit me to also have a bite at uh, what my senior Leonard uh, uh, brother, uh, you know, had said, the Leonard okay. Sick. On, uh, I think that in addition to the thought of the Leonard Sick, there is also something of fundamental interest we should not uh, oversight. If the people would have to resort to putting up banners to express their fears, uh, for the initiated, it is time to look inward. Uh, in Kenya, for instance, our method used to be theirs. But over time, they discovered that when a man whose status and authority is challenged in court is sworn into power to, t to, to administer the affairs of the nation, the tendency that having become the president of the nation by virtue of his clout and influence, may be able in one way or the other to influence the outcome of such an election in ways that favors him, is more higher, or sorry, is higher than when the reverse is the case. What did they do? After their last election, the judiciary took that step to sit and preside over all the electoral matters in two weeks before whoever was eventually declared as president came on board. If Nigeria will get it right, I think it's time we also take a cue from such initiation, where whoever INEC declares as the president does not get sworn in until the courts affirm by virtue of the entire proceedings being concluded, and that concluded before the swearing in date, so that we do not run ourselves into constitutional jam locks. I think that all of this constitutes to why the people are, by the banners here and there, are expressing their doubt and fear in the judiciary. And mind you, there have been few pockets of 
rumors flying here and there of uh, attempted uh, inducement. Names were even mentioned. So the people's fear, uh, with due respect to my learned Sikh, uh, is well-founded in some ways. Okay, all right. And then on a final note, because we are actively running out of time. So now to, to Professor Sam. Well, recently, just a few days ago, the president said that in order to threaten the judiciary, they are going to increase their pay. Do you feel like this might actually assuade or bring down fear of people that our judiciary is prone to inducement? That's the issue of uh, the judgment in courts last week. That's exactly what I tried explaining before. Because people will not understand the trend. They want to misinterpret some of these judgments. Anybody looking at uh, Section 65 of the Constitution with regards to qualification to be a member of the National Assembly, then you look at Section 77 and 134 of the electoral acts will not be surprised at the outcome of that uh, uh, tribunal judgment last week. You, you know that the judges were right. We stand to be corrected. There are so many other judgments coming up along the same line. The, the, the question we'll ask ourselves is uh, why the electoral empire, ANEC, will not be able to screen and tell people early enough that your candidate is not qualified instead of allowing them to do, go the full hawk and now find out at the end of the day that we are, they were not qualified to contest the election. That is one. So we need to get the INEC. I agree with my friend. Apologies. We need to get I'll have to cut the flow of your thought because we've officially run out of time. Sincere apologies. Many thanks for sharing your view with us on the show. We truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. And that was Professor Sam Erigo. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria and a legal practitioner. Also in the studio with me, I have Ado the Destiny, also a legal practitioner. Many thanks for being with us on the show. It's always a pleasure to be here. Okay, and this is where we'll be drawing the curtain on today's episode of Firecrackers. It has really been a pleasure. Please do make sure to join us same station next week. My name is Iriba Misalako. Do have a wonderful week ahead. Goodbye.